we're going to move on and we've got an environment and we're just going to talk about um, some of the other ways to do installs. And the first one is you can either do an update or a migration. A migration is used to change versions or releases. So for instance, I could have a Maxis B of 5.3 and I could do a migration update and update it to 7.1 or 6.1 while I'm restoring it. That's very, very cool, particularly if you're bringing across versions that may not be supported on this technology. So let's say I have an LPAR that's running at a particular version and technology level. I want to move it to the new Power7D models that don't support that level. I can actually do a migration install and tell it to upgrade the version or release to the supported level by pointing it at the correct PL, uh, LPP and spot. So it lets you do a migration on the fly. That's kind of cool. Uh, the update basically lets me change. It pr re preserves the version and release, but it will let me change a technology level of service pack as well. So the migration is really for changing versions. Both migrations and updates do not have to be done on the live disk. They could be done on an alternate root VG. And we're going to talk a little bit about alt v alternate root VG and alternate disk install because those combined with NIM give you the ability to basically do these upgrades and installs without affecting your production system. As long as you understand some things about, you know, the fact that it changes your boot list and things like that, so you need to basically time these so that you very, very closely to when you're going to do a reboot, uh, do the migration then. You can use NIMADM to uh, do migrations, to install down level makes the speeds, and then to do this migration or install my golden images. There's also a NIM alt clone, which allows you to do um, updates of TLs or SPs. And then there's something called multi-boss. With alternate disk install, I have two disks. I have the one I'm running on, and then I have the disk that I'm actually putting the new copy on. With multi-boss, what I can do is have that second copy of AIX on the same physical disk. So if you're booting from internal disks, you have a 300 gig internal disk, and you know AIX needs like 30 or 40 you could put a second copy of AIX on there using multi-boss, and then basically by correctly setting the boot list, you can boot from the second copy after it's updated. I actually prefer to use alternate disk install and use a second LUN. Just I, I'm always nervous that I'll hit the wrong copy of AIX otherwise. All right, so let's talk a little bit about NIMADM. So it basically lets you do all the things that are listed on this slide, from creating a copy of RubyG to using it, uh, to do it restoring a makes us be to it and and so on so the whole idea is that you're basically using NIM to do all the things that NIM can do but you're doing it to a copy of the disk not the real live disk and NIM alt clone is what we're going to use to do pretty much the same thing but just with updating TLs and service packs in order to set it up you're going to have to either have an additional disk or unmirror root VG and clean it up and then sort out your boss boot then you'll go into Smitty Alt Clone, and you'll pick your, tar your client and target disks. Obviously, your client's going to be your initial root VG. Your target will be the one that you just freed up or the new disk that you added. You're going to basically set it to do an update or point to the LPP source and tell it to go and do the update on the alternate um, install disk. At the end, it is going to reset your boot list. So if you were to reboot then, you would actually be booting from the new drive. So you either change the boot list back so that if, a reboot happens between now and when you plan to do the boot, you actually boot from the right one, or you set up to do the boot immediately. As I said, multi-boss allows me to have multiple versions of the base operating system on root VG. So it, if think about it as almost splitting your, t your disk in two, logically, um, you can have two bootable instances on the same physical disk. Now, t most, most of the people I'm working with nowadays are using NPIV, so apart from their VIO servers, everything's been booted from SAN. I've not seen this become as popular because it's more likely that you're giving yourself 50 gig LUNs that are perfectly sized for your root VG. Um, so to, do, to use ultimate disk install, you're just going to give yourself a second uh, 50 gig LUN. But if you are doing internal disks, people do look at this. I have a link here. It's an older link, but it's, into, it's on using alternate disk install clones. And again, like I just said, you have to have a spare hard drive run. You will need to install the boss.altdiskinstall.rte and make sure it's updated to the latest service pack. 
and then you're going to basically create bundles to install, etc. You can use Smitty Alt clone to clone it. And I've got some slides coming up that will actually show you, you know, some of the steps. The four commands that you're going to find really useful, Alt Disk Copy, Alt Disk Install, Alt Disk Makes This Be, and Alt Ruby G Op. If you look over to the right, I grabbed uh, a copy of what the SMITI looks like. So here I have the option to clone root VG to an alternate disk, to take a makes this B and install it on an alternate disk, or to do a NIM alternate disk migration, which is the ADM. So I start out, I do an LSPV, and I have two disks. One is in root VG, and the other one is nowhere. They're both virtual SCSI disks in this case. And then I check to make sure I have my alt disk install boot images and RTE installed. So we're good to go there. Then I decide if I'm going to install a makes this B on the alternate disk, here I tell it my target disk is HDisk1. So if we look back here, HDisk1 is not in any volume group. I tell it where my MaxisB is. So I just point it at my backup directory that has my MaxisBs. And I could, if I wanted to, you can see the piece in blue, I could, if I wanted to, provide it with an image data file. I have actually changed it here. I told it not to set the boot list to boot from, the next, from this disk on the next reboot. I think it defaults to yes. So if you don't want it to reboot from the new alternate disk image the next time you reboot, then you want to make sure you make that that is no. And I always do verbose output. So here it is running, and it basically restores the image. And you'll notice that it, instead of HD5, it creates alt underscore HD5, et cetera, et cetera. Now, while it's running, you can actually um, run some commands to see what it's actually doing. If I was to run LSPV, now I see alternate inst root VG. My boot list has not changed, but la later on it may act, it will actually change some things in there. When you're doing an alternate disk from a Maxis B, there are three phases it goes through. It's going to create the alternate disk, uh, alter inst root VG. It'll create the logical volumes and file systems that go there, and it will restore the Maxis B. It then does some customizations, and then at the very end it's going to unmount all those file systems get rid of the logical volumes, and it will vary off that volume group. And then if you allow it to, it'll set the boot list and reboot. Throughout, while it's running, if I run the LSPV-L, you can see all these alt inst ops, alt inst home, etc. These are the file systems that it was actually creating and the logical volume names, etc. Um, at the very end, those disappear. You can actually wake it up if you want to mount the file systems and do something. Let's say you want to add something to hosts just over on the alternate disk one. You could actually use alt disk install wake up the H disk. It will then mount all those file systems. You can see that the, root, the alt inst root BG is now active. Um, I can now go and do stuff over there, and then I can use the dash capital S to make it go back to sleep. You have options for getting to that data. Uh, like I said, during that time, if I was to do a df-g while the install is going on, you'll see all these file systems. Then the other thing I wanted to show you is that you actually have the ability to just do a quick copy. If I wanted to, I could just do an alt disk copy of everything in my current 5300 root VG to hdisk1. So these are all useful commands that, that are good to know about. All right, a couple of slides um, that I didn't have when I talked about this at PTQ have to do with the BIO server in NIM. You can actually uh, back up and restore and build BIO servers from NIM. You just need to be aware of how to do it. The first thing you're going to do is obviously define your BIO server partition as a client. So you're going to define it as a machine. You have to copy the BIO server makes us B images from the CD or DVDs to your NIM master. Um, as of 151, there were two images, both on the first DVD. As of version 2.2, there were three images. And the third one is on the second DVD. So what you have to do is basically go into the DVD and copy the images to a directory. So you'll get two of them off the first DVD and the third one off the third. Then you take those images, whatever you called them, you use the cat command. And although it's showing on three lines, this is one big line. And you copy them to one file. So this cat command will take those three images, and it will create nim underscore vios 2.2 makes us be. That is the image that you would then copy into NIM images and define to the NIM master. You're then going to define a spot, and the source for that spot will be the combined makes us be. There is no LPP source. You will also copy the BOSSINS data from the 
DVD and you'll create that as a BOSS Inst resource specific for the VIOs. Now if you want, you can actually use BOSS Inst, so do the Smitty Nim and then go into BOSS Inst and you can do a Make SSB install once you've defined a partition profile on the HMC. And I have a link to a document here that goes into this in a lot more detail. So this would just do a vanilla VIO server installation. Now let's talk about, well what if I want to back up and restore VIO servers or clone VIO servers? One of the things you'll need to do, and a lot of people aren't aware of this, is if you take a make SSB of your VIO server, it doesn't back up the virtual resources, so I'm talking your SEAs and so on. What you want to do is use the VIOSVR command, and we use that to back up all of the user-defined virtual resources. You have to back it up somewhere that is going to get backed up with the real VIO server backup. So it could be slash temp um, or something in root VG. And by the way, you can also use that to actually browse or restore the user-defined virtual resources later. So even if you're not planning, if you're just cloning a VIO server but it's going to have different virtual resources, you could still get in the habit of using VIOSBR. You just would not restore them on the back end. So then you mount your NFS file system. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can do the backups depending on what you want to do. One of them is to simply do a backup that creates the NIM resources tar package. And I have an example there to do it. I personally just do the make SSBs. So in this case down the bottom you'll see that I have a, a backup where I'm writing a file called VIOSA.makesSSB to my NFS file system. And I put the dash makes this B flag on the end so that it, it does a proper makes this B for me. All right, so additional to everything else that we um, had in the presentation, I have a number of different resources here that you may find useful. Some older NIM articles, some NIM concepts. You can also do searches on the VIOSBR command on NIM and VIOS and so on.